Let's add custom recipes and loot tables to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found some back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom recipes as well as custom loot tables to our Minecraft mod over here. And this is going to be, well, a couple of steps basically. And for that, you will have chapters down in the description below so you can jump to the desired chapter, so to speak. We're going to start with recipes because that's a little bit easier. And then we'll do some setting up for the custom loot tables. So basically, this is then going to enable us to actually drop something from our blocks. But there, are, you know, basically is a couple of things that we have to set up for that, which are not like they are not required. They're not optional. That's quite important. But let's first of all start with the recipes. So for recipes, they are basically part of a data pack. So every Minecraft mod is also simultaneously a data pack. And therefore, we can literally just do things with data packs. So if you actually have a data pack or if you've worked with that before, then well, that's actually going to be very useful in this case. But anyway, what we want to do is in our resources folder, we want to right click new directory called data. And then inside of there, we want to make a new directory called tutorial mod. And then finally in there, we want to make a new directory called recipe. There we go. And this is where our recipe JSON files go. Now let's just create the first two recipe JSON files. The first two I want to show you is basically taking the bismuth and making a bismuth block out of it, right? And then taking the bismuth block and getting nine bismuth out of that again. So that is going to be the following in the recipe folder. We're going to right click new file and this is going to be the bismuth.json. And the second one is going to be the bismuth underscore block.json. The convention is that the JSON file is named after whatever the result is. This is not strictly necessary. However, that is a convention to follow. And in the bismuth JSON, this is, of course, where we get nine bismuth out. So let's just see what this is. I'm going to type this out. This is, of course, all available to you down below as well for download. And then we'll see what the frick is going on over here. So this is a shapeless crafting recipe with the category of MISC for miscellaneous. We'll then have an ingredients list right here that is going to include one singular object with an item. And that item is going to be tutorial mod colon bismuth underscore block and then after the list right here we're going to have a result and that result has two entries in this case a count of nine because we want nine bismuth out of that and then an id and that is going to be the actual item and that's going to be tutorial mod colon bismuth over here there you go all right, so this is basically defining a shapeless recipe, meaning that any of the ingredients, right, that we add to this particular ingredients list, we can put into any slot in the crafting table, be it the 3x3 three three or the 2x2, two two, and then we will get the 9 bismuth out of it. And conversely, we now want to basically go in and say, well, if we put in 9 bismuth into the crafting table, then we want to get out a bismuth block. And to do that, we're going to make a type, and this is actually a different type. This time, this is the crafting underscore shaped recipe because this is a shaped recipe we're going to do a category of miscellaneous again and then this is going to be defining a key this key is going to be the b key and this b is going to stand for tutorial mod colon bismuth at the end over here we're then going to make a pattern this is once again a list of three strings in this case and those three strings are going to be populated in just a second and then we're going to have a result right here. This is a result. And this result is once again going to be a count. This time, however, of one. And then an ID. And the ID here is once again tutorial mod colon bismuth. And this time the underscore block over here. Because, of course, we want a bismuth block out of it. And this pattern right here. Well, what do we have here? Here we have a BBBB, BBB, and then BBB. BBB, yes, three, basically nine times the B right here. And what does this represent? Well, it should be fairly self-explanatory. This is, of course, representing the crafting table, right? This is a three by three area. So this is the entire crafting table filled with Bs. And what does the B represent? Well, that is what we define in this key right here. And basically, that's going to be the bismuth. So a full crafting table filled with bismuth is going to get us one bismuth block. 
That's the idea of the crafting shape in the crafting shapeless recipes over here. And one example here in this case, if you want to see some vanilla recipes, what you can do is you can open the external libraries and under the resources right here, you should have a data folder. And this one is going to include every single one of the data files from Minecraft vanilla, including all of the recipes, as you can see. So that means that every single recipe, including things like, well, how does, for example, let's see, I mean, what else is there, right? Like, what is there? Like stone cutting, for example, you can see this is how stone cutting would work. There are things like how you can smell stuff, blast stuff. All of those things are available to you. This is the best resource to basically simply go down to the external libraries and you can basically then copy over the contents of this, change the things you want to change, and there we go. Now, as for copying over, we will actually also be copying over a few things, and that is going to be the blasting and smelting recipes specifically for the ore block as well as the raw bismuth. So I'll be copying those over. Those are also available to you. However, they are really simple once you see them, right? So basically, I'm going to take a look at the blasting on here for the raw bismuth, and you can see literally it is basically almost the same thing here we simply also define a cooking time as well as the experience and then you still have a result you still have an ingredient object right here that it says hey if we smelt raw bismuth we're going to get a bismuth out of it in 100 ticks and a similar thing in the smelting over here let's for example look at the ore you can see literally the same thing just with a smelting change the change in cooking time and then we change what ingredient we put in but obviously if you were to smelt the normal ore we'd still get bismuth out of it right or you know if you smelt for example diamond ore you would get a diamond out of it that's sort of the idea and there you go so those are the examples for the recipes and because we've added all of them i would say let's just jump in the game and see if they work all right, found us back in minecraft and let's take a look if i take the bismuth right here i can make a block of bismuth and the same way i can put a block of bismuth in here and i can get nine bismuth out of it and if i were to take some raw bismuth and put it here and some raw bismuth and put it here i can blast it and smelt it and same thing goes with the ore as you can see it both smelts and blasts and here we go we get a bismuth out of it here we get a bismuth out of it of course in the blasting furnace for the ore we get a bismuth out of it and finally here we also get a bismuth out of it so that is custom recipes added to minecraft pretty cool and of course, we're not done quite just yet because the next step is going to be, well, making sure that our blocks drop something. And for that, what we will do is I will actually add an additional block in this case. Now, why is this the case? Well, we already have one ore block, but I want a second one in order to demonstrate a couple of things. This is not strictly necessary that you do this. However, it might be quite interesting to do. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to duplicate the bismuth ore over here and this is then going to turn into bismuth deep slate underscore ore. Same thing here. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker than I usually do when it comes to adding things. The actual adding of the block is also available down below so no worries there at all. We have the bismuth deep slate ore. We're going to add it to the creative mode tab. It's going to be the deep slate ore right here. That's going to be fine. And then of course we need all of the different json file so let's do the translation first very straightforward this is going to be the deep slate or the block states json file just dragging into the same folder changing the name right here and as you can see when you have added about a thousand or so blocks in your lifetime then it gets quite easy and you know all of the tricks on how to how to do this uh this this is how people must feel when they know how to use vim right this is this is probably how they feel like right <laughs> deep slate or texture over here we're going to add this as well and then the other block has been added and now that we have this well now we can proceed in order to well facilitate the dropping of blocks because right now we're not just adding the json files for the loot tables however this step cannot be skipped you have to actually do the step and that is to actually make sure that the blocks over here have a defined tool that they can be mined with because we have this requires correct tool for drops method that we're calling on all of the block behavior, which means that, well, we can't mine them with our hand. This does make a lot of sense in my opinion because of well, the business block and the ore and the deep state ore, those should not be mineable with the hand. However, the question is, well, what is the correct tool for this particular drop? And we define this by going to resources data and then we're going to make a new directory called Minecraft. Inside of there, we make another new directory called Tags. Inside of there, another new directory called Block. And then finally, inside of the Block directory, one last directory called Mineable. This is not how you spell it. That is just a test. 
the the real spelling is like this mine able make sure that this is spelled correctly and then you should be good to go tags as a high level overview we still will talk about those in a future tutorial but as a high level overview these are collections of blocks items entities or whatever other thing you might want to add to minecraft that have a similar purpose or a shared functionality let's say in this case what we will do is we define a block tag for the pickaxe here in this case so in the mineable folder right click new file or pickaxe.json and this is going to look kind of like this it's going to replace false and then we're going to have values a values list right here and this list is going to include all of our blocks that we have so far so the bismuth underscore block in this case and then we can duplicate this the bismuth or and the bismuth deep slate underscore or now this means that now we've defined it and all three of our blocks could be mineable with a pickaxe that's pretty cool however they could be mineable with every tier of pickaxe so the mineable folder over here just defines what type of tool we have but not the tier the other type of types of tools could be an axe so you could do a hoe.json or you could do a shovel.json those would all work and you could add those we're not going to do this in this tutorial however we will add it to other things in the block folder and that is going to be the needs underscore diamond underscore tool.json basically saying hey we need at least a diamond level tool over here or a or the needs underscore iron underscore tool.json there we go. There's also the needs underscore stone underscore tool at Jason, and those are the three that exist. In this case, what I want to do is I want to say, well, well, you know what? The actual ore, that one can only be mined with an iron tool, and the deep slate ore, that one can only be mined with a diamond tool. When I say only with, that means with that ore above, right? So iron tool, if I put it in here, it can then also be mined with diamond as well as netherite. That's basically always the case. There are some, some other tags where you can basically narrow it and say well it can be mined with iron but not with other ones but in this case you know it, we, we are going to be good with this basically and because i haven't added the bismuth block to either one of them that means that one can be mined with a wooden pickaxe and basically all the ones above it as well so those are going to be the tags that we need to add this to and then finally we can go back to data tutorial mode where we add the loot underscore table folder over here where we then add another new directory called blocks very important that this is done correctly it is loot underscore table and then blocks and then the blocks will be copied over the json files will be copied over usually i know that people are not the most thrilled when i copy over you know entire files the reason will get quite obvious quite soon for the bismuth block right what is this going to be well that is simply going to be dropping itself so this is how a json file like a loot table json file looks like for a drop for a block to drop itself fairly straightforward all things considered it is that this would still be you know doable and you can type this out obviously though it is a little bit cumbersome to basically type all of this craziness out and really the only things you need to change is the name right here and then the random sequence right here those would be the only places where you need to change this and also what's very important the names of the files have to match exactly the name that you're giving it right here so those two have to match exactly now when it comes to the ore the ore as you can see is a little bit more complicated because well when you mine the ore in this case what i want is i want raw bismuth to drop when you're just normally mining it also fortune can apply to this so it's going to drop more if you have a fortune applied and then i also want it to be so that when you use silk touch well then the actual ore block drops itself right that's a normal way that an ore works right this would be the same loot table would exist for let's say iron right that would be the same loot table now for the deep slate ore i thought to myself you know what i actually want the same silk touch thing as well but i also want a set count right here between two and five this would be the same way that copper works where you get actually multiple copper like raw copper items to drop from this and that is basically how this one works right so there you go and that is basically a little bit crazy to type all of this craziness out if it's basically always going to be the same sort of general structure if you want anything that's more complicated obviously there are some other things to well think about number one obviously is once again in the external libraries ah uh, yes under the resources what we can do is we can take a look at every single block loot table that exists in vanilla so i i mean you have the power in your hands right this is like as good as it gets you have every single example from vanilla right there and you can basically take a look at it and see 
you know, basically take it, uh, expand it, change it around a little bit, and then use it for your own mod. That's always one of the best things. I will also link a couple of things in the description below that might help you with the loot tables and recipes as well. But yeah, those are basically all of the steps that we need to do. There are quite a few of them, but now we are basically done. And I would say, let's jump into the game and see if our blocks finally drop something. All right, fans, is back in Minecraft. And the first thing is very important. Uh, switch to survival mode because I have seen a couple of people try to mine those in uh, creative mode and it didn't well quite work out. Uh, but yeah, so basically the normal bismuth block can be mined with a wooden pickaxe. And of course, any other pickaxe will also work. That is totally fine. However, the normal ore, we've defined it so that it can only be mined with iron. So this one should not drop anything. And you see nothing drops. Or if I use iron, then we actually get a raw bismuth to drop. And the same thing happens with the diamond pickaxe because it is basically you set the lowest point at which something can be mined with. And then here, it's not going to work with an iron pickaxe. We can try. However, this should not work. There you go. However, with a diamond one, there we go. Something drops and that is custom loot tables and custom recipes both added to Minecraft. Awesome. As per usual, all of the code, including the JSON files, are linked down below in the GitHub repository, so no worries there at all. But that's going to be it for this tutorial. Next time in this video, we'll talk about an advanced item. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.